Thank you so much for doing this. This is about you and your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. And I love the video uh, that you did for 100% Baby. I was just dying laughing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, do you want to talk about how we got that video? Let's uh, talk about let's talk about how you got it. Well, let's first talk about where you where were you born and raised? I was born in uh, Howard County, Maryland, which is a county outside of Baltimore. Okay. Uh, in Maryland, it's it's a lovely place to grow up. Uh, I, I lived there till I was seventeen, and then I went to Syracuse uh, for my undergrad. Moved to New York City, spent five years there. Now I've been in LA for almost five years. So very cool, very cool. How'd you get into music? Uh, music was always the the thing for me. Uh, granted, when you grow up in a place like a, a suburb of Baltimore, there's not a lot of outlets for someone who wants to be an artist, uh -huh. right? So um, I, I got involved in musical theater really young uh, and choir and the other things that are available to, mm -hmm. in a public school, you know, county sure. uh, situation. So musical theater is what, what got me in the door of performing. Then I went to Syracuse to get a BFA in musical theater. Oh, awesome. Okay. Which was awesome because I got sure. to, um, we took piano, we took music theory, we took ear training. And so you have the music degree as well as dance and acting. Okay. Awesome. Well, yes. uh, was keyboard or piano, was that the first instrument you learned did you, or did you pick that up later? I, I'm really not good, but I <laughs> learned, I know theory. So okay. I can, I know what every key signature is. I know what all the chords are and I understand how they go together. Sure. So I just play chords. Okay. Uh, and then I hand it off to someone who's really good to jazz <laughs> it up. Sure. Sure. <laughs> That's awesome. So when you went to school for, uh, for musical theater, were you, was it your goal to, you know, get it on Broadway or was that kind of what you were shooting for or? I think I was just following where, where the Lord led me, you okay. know, mm -hmm. I, I musical theater was seemed like a, an accessible outlet for that. I could that I could get work with that. I could, you know, sustain a career with in, in whatever path that took me. Um, I got there and realized I'm not really a theater person though. Okay. I have a lot of personality and a lot of ideas uh -huh. and, 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 the theater, unless you're the director, is not really a huge creative outlet for the actor. Sure. Yeah, contingent upon what there's, yeah, contingent upon the style we're doing. But in, in you know, in mainstream musical theater, you're standing in the spot they tell you. You're looking at the light they tell you, and uh, that's it. Right. Um, so I performed in some shows in New York when I graduated school, uh -huh. and I had a great time. Uh, doing that, but uh, songwriting was always happening for me. And when I was in college, I was had this like, I should be a pop star. I'm, okay. What am I doing here? I should be a pop star. And <laughs> that was like the era of Kesha and Katy Perry, you know, like they were just sure. dominating. And I was like, there needs to be like a gay male answer to this. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you got all these girls singing songs about how great it is to be gay and no right. gay people. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're <laughs> completely right. Yeah, there was. <laughs> it was a weird time. You know, you had yeah. firework and born this way. We are who we are. Raise your glass. I mean, F and perfect. There was just 2011 was just all the girls singing about being gay. Right. And no gays. <laughs> right. Lady no, Gaga was and gay, no gay guys doing it. <laughs> just <laughs> celebrating the right. the women that were, were writing the songs about it. They were picking the outfits and doing the hair and probably writing the songs too, but they weren't in a in a spotlight. Sure. Um so I actually went on the show X Factor when I was 21. Oh, did you? Okay. I did. And um they hated me. Um <laughs> It turns out they weren't looking for a star, actually. Um, they were looking for, a, I, I thought it was gonna be different than American Idol, but it wasn't. Okay. Right, I thought that they were looking for a, a, a full package performer, but they really were just looking for a sob story with a person who could sing karaoke well. Sure, and, isn't that most of it? You know, it's always like, and then you have to, you're waiting, anticipating the, the horrible thing that happened to this person. <laughs> I should have known when they were like fishing into my trauma. 
um, sure. you know, and I was like, yes, I got bullied. I got bullied really badly. I could not take the bus in high school. But is that matter to me? No. The whole mm -hmm. point is that we're still here. Sure. So I'm not going to sit here and cry about it on national television. I'm here to, to sing. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm here to perform and sing and, and try to try to win, not win based on my my past. But I said at the audition, and they didn't air any of my stuff um, because it wouldn't have made sense because I was good. They were, I was good and then they hated me, <laughs> right, right? right? So it wouldn't have made sense with the narrative that they had set up because um, it's a TV show. So I kind of went out, started doing my thing and they just started terrorizing me right away. And I was like, holy shit, I just got duped. Mm -hmm. um, but I said from the beginning, I'm either going home the first day or I'm winning. There was no in between for me. Right. <laughs> They're kicking me out now, or I'm winning the entire thing. And they kicked me out now. Okay. <laughs> and Paula Abdul called me strange, which that's amazing. Right? I was going to say, that, that was where I was going to go with this. How did she do that? But now it makes sense. The X Factor. <laughs> she called me strange. And uh, I remember my jaw just dropping. And I, I was, I had just graduated from theater school. So I'm so respectful. I'm like, Hi. thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> like, yep, I'm just going to leave this stage smiling, um, which is not what they wanted, of course. Right. Um, and ha had it been now, I'm like, Paula Abdul, you want to come up here? We can sing one of your songs. Okay. And then we'll see who sings it better. Because I can <laughs> sing the shit out of Forever Your Girl. And as Whitney Houston said, you had pitch problems on the record. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. So, you should have challenged her oh, right goodness. there. <laughs> they might have heard that. Not have the, they would have, I would have gotten through. That's the thing. Had right. I been sassy, they would have put me through, but I didn't, I didn't have time for that. I didn't have time. It was a horrible experience though, after, you know, they film it because then it doesn't air for months. Right. So I spent the first three months, I just graduated college, just moved to New York City, and spent those first three months just living in fear of what was going to air, uh -huh. how embarrassing it was going to be, that no one would ever take me seriously and that no one would ever love me, right? That, just yeah. the stories stories we tell ourselves sure i never thought about that like yeah not knowing because you don't know what they're gonna air or if you're gonna make the cut on whatever edit they're gonna do because they're, they're the producer there is gonna make their own narrative of the show anyway and all you can do is reflect on what you did that day and so you're like sure. was, was there a part where i was really out of breath that they're gonna that they're gonna use and then they're gonna use me looking stupid and they're gonna use foot you know right there's so much they could do yeah so, so for, for for months it drove me completely insane that was the beginning of my mental health my serious mental health issues uh um, wow. <laughs> so i really feel for anyone who's been on those shows and not had an easy go of it because it's it's really not nice it's a right, modern be the color. butt of the joke or you know that goes viral on youtube or whatever and it's like i can't imagine being one of those people so horrible because so at that point your career is just known as oh you're the guy that screwed up on <laughs> American Idol. And how are you supposed to get laid when you're that person? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> that was my fear. I'm like, no one's going to want to sleep with me. Because I'm well, going to be a clown. Aren't you the guy from X Factor? <laughs> you're but, like, no. You know, the, the good news is nobody watched that show, that season. And um, I now have more followers and streams than the girl who won. So there you I, go. It, it turns around, kids. <laughs> okay. So from X Factor and that amazing experience you had, um, how did you continue in music? Like, what were you, you obviously were writing your own songs at that point. God. God, yes. But, but literally, God carried me through. And okay. I was on a subway on, in New York City. And these two people are talking, these two guys. And they're like, oh yeah, she was great. Oh yeah, we're gonna we should cast her as this. And I was like, uh, I'm staring at them. And so they look at me and they're like, Can I help you? Do we know you? And I was like, No, but I was just eavesdropping and I want to know what you're talking about. <laughs> they were like, Oh, they're like, we wrote a Save by the Bell musical and it's a workshop and we're casting it right now. And I was like, Well, you should see me for it. And they were like, uh, well, we kind of already did auditions. I'm like, I don't care. I'm really good. Um <laughs> 
And they were like, well, you would be good for Slater. And I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll do whatever. And they're like, right. well, we have, they handed me the script, the signs on the tra train. I said, do you want to read for it? I said, sure, let's go. And I read for it. And I gave them my, I had a resume on me because I'm an actor in New York sure. City coming of from course. a class. <laughs> And I'm like, I gotta go, this is my stop. And I got off and they called me and I got the job. And then that led to a three year gig with that. Really? Wow. Yes. Uh -huh. That's incredible. It was pretty incredible. And then that job led me to um, another show I did in Toronto with Perez Hilton, who heard me backstage playing piano and singing and was like, did you write that? I said, yes. He said, you need to move to LA. What are you doing? Wow. I said, really, you think I can make it? He said, as a songwriter, I was like, what does that mean? He's like, well, you're a little old to be a star at this point. And I was like, well, fuck you too. I, <laughs> <laughs> I never doubted the star part, okay? I maybe doubted the songwriting, but now I'm like, oh, well now we're set. Yeah, if I if you validated my songwriting, I don't care if you think I'm too yeah, old for this. Just, <laughs> yeah, you're just jealous. No, right. I, I love him. He's like, he, we became great friends after that. <laughs> So that so you obviously then did you move to LA pretty soon after that uh, exchange? Yeah, yeah, it was probably within a year. I directed another musical off Broadway that ran for a couple months before Andrew Lloyd Webber sued it and had to close. Um, <laughs> How did that happen? That must have been a story. <laughs> it was called Cat Dashians, and it was the <laughs> it was the musical Cats basically, but the kardashians oh, yeah. as the cats and <laughs> it was really genius because both that shows really are about is. cats and kardashians are both about nothing right? right right so you you've just got a bunch of cats coming up and being like hey this is my story and same with kardashians <laughs> so it was the most genius thing and of course like catlin jenner um was, catlin <laughs> yes saying meow maurice <laughs> and it was it was a really it was a wonderful show, but it got sued and to be close. Um, and then I moved to LA. Okay. <laughs> so you get to LA and then do you have like when do you start releasing music on your, you know, under your name? In this under this trajectory, I sure. just kept I just kept um writing, I just kept keeping things to myself. I was really insecure and uh started working with producers in LA who I finally was like, oh, these sounds are cool. Now, these songs kind of sound like what I thought they'd sound like. We never quite got there. So I never wanted to put it out. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't put anything out until 2018. And even then I wasn't satisfied. Okay. My first song, well, Girly. Yeah. Um, and I loved the video. I did the video. I always do my visuals. But um, I, that song, I was like, it's just not. Nah. But I just kept going. Uh huh. You had to put it out. If I... You, uh, if an artist is listening, right? Like you, you've got to get it out there because that opens the space for more to come in. Sure. And the exposure is what led me to getting to work with different producers because they're like, hey, this guy's getting a lot of views on that video. I can do better, you know, or I can do this. Right. With him. Yeah. Oh, so was it mainly the video for, for a girly that kind of drew people to the rest of your songs or your in your in your songwriting girly i just happened to be a great first yeah Impression. stab at it the, yeah I, I think like the first week we had quarter of a million views i'd never posted a youtube video prior wow do you know uh, how that that kind of the ball got rolling on that or just happened to fall where it fell and, and people was, liked it my concept was genius. I <laughs> I recreated five female music videos and told as a boy without, you know, doing drag, but wearing the outfits, which had for me a super feminist undertone of like, this is what you make these people do. Not some of them really want to, but you're like, this is what, this is what you're consuming. Sure. But now I'm doing it. Right. So, <laughs> and of course- as a child growing up, these were the videos I mimicked. So there was, it was a very layered video for me, um, but I knew it was going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and, and obviously, obviously it did. <laughs> it did, yeah. And then nope. I was such, I was such an alcoholic that I couldn't get anything done after that. Okay. Just so drunk. All, uh, did you, Oh. Did, did that end up stopping or like, what was that? How did you make the next move? Yeah, I'm sober now, but I, yes. um, it, 
Congratulations. I've done, I've got four years. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Uh, I'm a year and, and a couple months now. So. Congratulations. That's huge. One year is huge. I mean, shoot, a week is huge. <laughs> and, and especially during this, right? Right. D- yeah, right. But exactly. I'm so grateful. I would have gained 50 pounds. I <laughs> I would have. Right. I, I'm thinking about it too now. I'm like, if I was drinking at the time, I probably would have killed about, about 30 beers a day, which would have added about 150 pounds by the time. I would have been huge. Pandemic. Yeah. I would have been huge. I would have been cracked out. I probably would have started doing like some real ass drugs, like, cause I was pretty, you know, uh, I was, I was pretty classy with it. I was uh-huh. just a drinker. Sure. Um, I did, I live in LA. I mean, I did some Coke. It's right. Part, it's it's like a thing here. <laughs> um, right. But other than that, I wasn't really playing with much. But I'm that was that would have been my fear in quarantine was I would have been like ah, gotta pass the time. Sure. What else? Someone is going give me on? a pipe, right? <laughs> yeah. What else? <laughs> wow. So well, after the 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 girly and it's doing well and and like Rich comes out, how how much? after that like how how soon after that and was that a video and was that something that you were kind of like okay this thing did really well is this next project gonna you know perform so girly girly rich and give a fuck these three videos were all filmed around the same time oh okay i was so turned up and so self-loathing that when girly came out i was doing everything i could to sabotage what was happening so I halted everything oh, and wow. it took me like a year to muster up putting out rich, which was done. It was supposed to come out a month after girly. Oh, wow. Um, and at that point I had gone to Canada. I'd work on a record with the, the Kuya brothers, Bobby and Sammy Kuya, who had just done Alessia Cara's first album. And wow. we wrote this record that was, it was, it was heavy. It was real like kind of country. It was all about my drinking problem and my daddy, you know, all the issues. Mm-hmm. And um, now that my, now that it's my daddy issues, I just call all male issues daddy issues. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like my dad. Um, <laughs> but it's just easier for people to, to palate, right? right. Um, the, the I've written this record and I, and I, so I knew I had this thing going on inside of me that's like other artists, but I had all this content done. Uh-huh. And it became a conflict of what do we do? Sure. So I ended up saying, all right, I'll honor this guy who I was and am in some parts and put out Rich. And um, then I happened to do a nice song with this DJ in Lithuania, Giovanni, um, Stop the Show, which was a big hit over in the Baltics, Poland and radio and Uh really humbling and, and exciting for me to see myself not through the lens of like a camp shtick music video. Uh um, and say, oh, okay, I've got potential outside of this. Mm-hmm. So in sobriety and during the quarantine, I looked at my work and I said, all right, these songs were fun. I'm going to honor that that guy's vision, that drunk mm-hmm. me's vision. And I'm going to show people that it could be done. And I'm going to show my old self that it could be done and what it would look like. But I already recorded an album that's going to come out this summer. Oh, wow. Uh, and it's all... Um, I'm so excited about it. It's a whole other game. It's a okay. whole other world. Um, was that done during COVID or during? It was. It okay. was. I did a camp. I did a camp with two of my collaborators. We we got a house. We quarantined. We worked on this stuff for uh, ten days. We got ten tracks. It's um live orchestra. Wow. Japan. It's it's something it's exciting to hear. You'll you'll love it. I, I, I can't no wait. Is, you can can't you can't hate it. Uh-huh. It's this kind of thing where I've never felt so good about something where I'm like, I mean, you can say you don't like it, like, well, but you can't say it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, is that what you're working on? You said you're on, on set shooting right now. Are you shooting a video for that or is there is it something completely different? No, I've got I've got I'm I'm wild, so my, I'm telling you a secret, and and I don't know who's going to watch this, so um, I'm telling hopefully them everyone, secret. hopefully all your followers. <laughs> I'm releasing these. The I have four videos coming out, and they're all kind of in the same vein of the picture I've already painted, and then we're 180. 
this ah. is I, I want to end this I want to complete this visual cycle though so mm -hmm. that you know it gets honored and shown that way and a lot of people love it so I'll give them what they love but then it's me time and it's it's a full transition and I think that um, they will enjoy it amazing I cannot but, wait I cannot wait yeah, now it's what really it cool it's yeah. really good so it's different than what you've already put out. <laughs> Very different. Okay. <laughs> Very, different. Very cool. I mean, it's probably going to be mixed in surround sound. Like it's a full, I mean, immersive. Rad. It's, it's the difference between being a drunk and, and being clear, right? I'm like, <laughs> when I'm drunk yeah. and on coke, I'm like, oh, 808 based on everything. Like, and now sure. I'm like, can someone get me an oboe? Like, can <laughs> <laughs> someone give me an oboe? <laughs> That's what the name of your record should be. <laughs> Can you throw a glockenspiel on top of that? Because I can't listen to this. There's no depth. Um, so yeah. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. So talk to me about this video that uh, with your dog, DJ Baby Duff. I how did this yes. happen? And how and, and this I'm sure this is quite different from what you <laughs> what you recorded during quarantine and in, in with in those 10 days. So different, but the same collaborators. And that oh, was okay. when I knew I really liked them. I really liked them because um, they they got what they pick up what I'm putting down. Got so it. when I came in the room and they were like, "What are we going to write about today?" I was really frustrated because I had just gotten back from Canada where I'd done this really dope record that I think I could win a Grammy with, and no one's receiving it because they want me to do girly. Oh, sure. And so I was like fuck this, we're gonna do the stupidest song anyone's ever heard. And we're gonna repeat baby as many times as we can. And they both looked at me and were like, okay. <laughs> so we, we wrote the song and uh, we recorded it and then it sat. Then I got a dog, I named her baby. And I was like, called them. I'm like, hey, we need to remix that song. She's gonna, she really wants to do this. <laughs> she really wants to do this. She's a double Sagittarius. She was built for this. Yeah, and She's a star. So, um, you know, she was really easy to work with. She showed up. <laughs> not a lot um, of drama. <laughs> not, no drama and she, great ideas. And I, 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 the, the production of that song is like very inspired by Baltimore club music. I grew up listening to, uh -huh. uh, and I've always wondered how it's never quite hit the mainstream um, or no one's really taken it and run with it. We kind of did a future pop spin on it. Yeah. Um, which isn't quite where I would go. I would have done like the really good Baltimore club would take like the Supremes come see about me and they'd chop and skew that. And oh, then they'd have it. these moments where, where it just hits the chorus and it plays as it was. And you're like, this is an experience. Um, but you know, that's more where my new record is. So if that stuff gets remixed, that's how we'll do it. Okay. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I, I went and took the photos of my dog. I had my friend Scott, who's an animator, who I just think is so cool, do it. I just said she needs to save the world and Guy Fieri needs to be in it. That's my only note. <laughs> I was, I just watched, I had to watch it like about three times before, um, before this conversation. I was laughing so hard. Like even the begin, just like the beats and then the dog's face, like him fl or her flying across the screen, like just everything about it. I was laughing so hard. Like that video is so brilliant. Thank you. I, I, I wanted to do something for children and adults and, you know, stoners and, and trippers and all those people to like. Yeah, that's like something you'd see on like Adult Swim or something. Right. So that's what I, I Adult <laughs> Swim, I would like, wanted to toe that line of like, this could very well be enjoyed by an adult, but a three-year-old's going to go crazy for it also. Right, yeah, it definitely has that feel. Like, um, I have a four-year-old son. I'm going to throw him in front of that. He's at school right now, but after watching it a few times, I'm like, he. this is like a lot of the videos that he somehow lands on on, like, YouTube kids. <laughs> like, it's like, but it's better and funny. <laughs> the, thank you. The issue for me is that uh, it's so different than what I'd been doing that the algorithm of the internet did not enjoy me doing this departure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I usually get like 10,000 views a day, the first day of my videos. I'm like, this one had like 800. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, this is better than all my videos. How does this one happen? <laughs>
Uh, well, what I do love you people it, man. Want? Right, right, exactly. So, are you going to be doing? So, that was obviously something that was kind of just off the cuff and not really part of the the project that you're currently working on. Or so what's I always out this knew. Summer? I always knew that I was departing into like something that would make me be viewed more seriously as a traditional artist. Uh -huh. um, and that was why I wanted DJ Baby Dub to exist. Okay. So that when I have the hankering to create a pop track, I'll see if DJ Baby Dub wants to do it. See if she'll and then <laughs> she can put it out with me featuring on it. Uh -huh. That way I'm, I'm never pigeonholed into a style. I love that. So DJ Baby Dump is going is its own. It, she, she is now her own artist as her, and you will feature on some on some yeah. of the songs, if not all of them. I'll feature <laughs> if she can get JoJo Siwa, she'll take her. But she, <laughs> you know what I mean. If anyone sure. wants to sign up, call me. I saw you had Tori Kelly on here. She DJ Baby Dump would love to work with you, Tori. Um, <laughs> so well, it's not limited. If she can get that, if we see if we can make that happen, that'd be amazing. <laughs> It's not limited to just me, but baby <laughs> would work with anyone. She really loves people. Okay. My oh. other dog, Daisy, she's the Ashley Simpson of the situation. And oh. unfortunately, she's living in the shadow right now. But, but she might have a record. You never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, well, John, dude, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it, man. I'll let you get back to, to your video. But I have one more question for you uh, before for I let it. you go. I want to know you if you see have all any... this makeup. Yeah, it does. You can't really tell that you have makeup on. I mean, this video is in black and white. So oh, they did a very good job of uh, blending. Thank you. <laughs> or you That's did, why we hire know. gay people. I don't know who no. did that makeup. <laughs> a, a gay. I got a gay to do it. Okay, I mean, there you go. I can say that. <laughs> I can say that. Oh. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Study. Study. I know everything about music that I want to know, right? If you ask me about an artist that I like, I can tell you all the lyrics to all of theirs. I know all the words. I know all the words to probably every song that's been popular since 1950. It's, it's just the way my brain works. And when I meet artists who don't have a, a plethora of references, I don't know how they're going to create. And so I think that in a world that is so oversaturated in content, you really have to find your taste, trust your taste, and know your shit. And, and I've learned this process. And when you hear the new record, you're going to be like, oh, that's what he's talking about. Because I thought I had to do something to fit or, or you know, I thought I had to use sounds or use whatever for people to listen to it, to get streams or sure. to get the industry to listen. Now that I did fully what I want to do, I'm like, holy shit, that was easier. Like, why was I doing that? And I'm so excited about this stuff. Um, this stuff was fun and I think it's great, but this other thing is my heart. So finding the love, I think, finding the love and, 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 and actively loving it. Loving, is, lo loving something is an action, it's an active thing. So you can't just say, I'm an artist. You just love it. That's it. Bring it back, bro.